Good afternoon, or I guess I should say good morning. You are now watching the Cannon County Chamber Connection, and of course, we're so proud to be here, and we're so proud that you're here, and we want to thank DTC as usual for giving us this time in their uh, TV scheduling. Uh, it's a big benefit to the people that are able to come on here and talk about their events and their businesses. And of course, your host today is my partner in crime here, Sue Conley. Hello. And she is the president for the chamber. And uh, of course, my name is Carolyn Motley. You see me every month. So we do have guests today. Um, Sue, is there anything you want to look back on that we need to talk about first? No, you know, we had a great weekend last week. This weekend, we had the art uh, center raffle. raffle. Reverse raffle. Reverse raffle, which I did not win, which was good. <laughs> but it was, it you was, didn't, no. You didn't win it no, last year. I didn't win it last year. It was very fun. And then we had the We Care Cannon, which was pretty awesome. Yes, and that I was, wasn't able to get in on that this year, but I, that's one of my favorite events to be yeah. involved in, really. I met the cutest little girl. Her name was Kaylin, and uh, she was so happy with everything she received. She got a pencil. She was like, oh my gosh, I got a pencil. She was the <laughs> cutest thing I think I, I, I've ever seen in my life. She was so excited. She's the one that got excited about black socks. She had to have black <laughs> shoes because she she likes or uh, all the su suits. superheroes. So she liked Spider-Man and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So she didn't want any pink, no pink <laughs> at all. She was very, very sweet. I already like her. Yeah, I liked her too. I liked her too. And she was so excited. So that well, was exciting. This is event. good. It yeah, is. Yeah, that was and exciting. Not, how many people do you think came through there? 579 kids, I think, is what Daisy told me. That's great. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I, I am so and I think Mike uh, Thomas, uh, Dr. Thomas, said that they raised forty-nine thousand dollars. That's pretty impressive in oh, Canada. Oh, it is. I think that's correct. But they give so much. I mean, if you and there's no uh, limits on your income or anything. That's it's right. any child that is a student in Cannon County Schools can go through this line. Any wow. of them. Yeah. And um, it's really awesome. They get everything that they would need to start school actually except for well they even give t-shirts did they, they do give that this year they did <laughs> shoes underwear socks haircuts dental dental exam uh eye, eye exam uh, tabitha was there for uh you know uh, medical exams uh, we talked about immunizations which is really important because kids can't start school without them um, th it was just, and every school supply they need. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've traveled, I've lived lots of places in the country, and I've never seen anything like this. It's very awesome in our Cannon County. It is. It was very fun. And everybody should be very proud because yeah. the teachers and the committee members that work on this, that committee works on this year round. They do. They do. And uh, they put all this together, and I think half, if not more, of Cannon County volunteers to help. I with agree. This. On the, yeah. They, I was going to say, uh, how do you volunteer, and then how do you raise money? You just money? go down they? there. Now, they raise money a lot of different ways uh, through grants, they have corporate corporations sponsor, that sponsor okay. certain you, things you, you know lots of yeah. donations okay. and they have a dinner an annual dinner right. where you go and they have silent auction you bid on stuff or you can just donate money all right um yeah it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome and and the committee itself is small so there's very little crapola if you don't mind me saying <laughs> that on tv uh it's it's just very nice everybody gets along for you know that yeah, you see, they do and everybody works together and there's not a whole lot of ego stuff involved i no, that i've seen they don't do yeah. this for yeah. the glory no no they no. don't they do this yeah. as because okay there's a need <laughs> so we that have was two a guests. good word you yeah, chose thanks. wasn't yeah. it we do have two guests and we have a new chamber, well, they're both new chamber members. Okay. One of them is Nick Gann, and he's beside you, Sue, and he is the owner of Nick's High Tech Pressure Washing. Yeah. And Nick, About you that. do a lot of other things besides that, don't you? Yeah, I don't want to fall in the category of handyman, but it's uh, <laughs> dominantly staining and sealing and pressure washing. So, so don't call him to change a light bulb or... You could ask things. Yeah. Fix your door or something. There you go. So, so how does how do we get contact with you and tell us a little bit about your day? Like, what would you do in one in a day? Well, I don't know. That varies. Um, okay. But you would go to uh, www.hightechpressurewashing or hightechstainandseal.com, um, or you could call 615-796-6425. Okay. Those would be the ways to get in touch. In terms of what I do, 
Oh, that's a Just huge, whatever. yeah. So when I see, when I go by these houses, these beautiful old houses, and they are all covered with mold, <laughs> yeah. mold, chipping paint, tons of things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, prepping for paint or just cleaning or staining and sealing, restoring log cabins. I mean. Oh, okay. So when I say it's kind of a variance, it really depends on New the workload. New decks and fences. And oh yeah, decks, fences. Um, PVC and vinyl fencing, all sorts of things. You put them up or you clean them? Oh, clean them. Clean, clean them or restore <laughs> yeah. and paint. Restore or, and paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Seal, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. But you do a lot of sealing on the decks and they're in concrete. I've done uh, quite a bit of restoration. Pavers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what kind of what kind of uh, material do you use to, to seal the decks? Um, I, when dealing with a wood project, I only use a penetrating oil stain. Okay. Um, because it kind of hydrates the wood, brings everything back to as new as possible. Okay. So pretty chemical heavy process. But okay. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't use that, that paint that goes over it. You don't use that. You, you no, no. Like well, that. like the deck over type products, I think they have some kind of maybe legal issue at this point. Okay. Uh, and then a lot of your paints and things are going to chip flake sure. peel, sure. which is, you know, yeah. not yeah. desirable down the road when it comes time to yeah. reseal. Yeah. Yeah. So you would clean off anything that anybody needed, basically. Any exterior surface Any exterior, is the, yeah, yeah, the simplest yeah. way to, to, yeah. to work. Okay. Roof cleaning, things like that. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. You don't think about brick uh, needing that, but really it does. We have a brick house and we pressure wash it twice a year, whether it needs it or not. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. And you'd be surprised what, what you get off of it, really. There you go. I mean, I shower twice a year whether I need to. I know it, and I think that's a good idea. I do. <laughs> Thanks for showering today. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, did you? Yeah. Okay, Sorry. thank you. But there are other ways that you, now, you don't just work here in Cannon County. You work Murfreesboro. Uh, yeah, I guess Middle Tennessee is the simplest way to say it, but uh, Cannon and most of the counties that surround it, Rutherford, Davidson, and so on, uh, do tons of work in places like Williamson County. Just and you do buildings there. and, I mean, office buildings, you do buildings yeah, as yeah. well we're, as houses. and We're commercially insured for some good. fairly large structures. and That's another hospitals. point. You are insured and licensed. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we take that pretty seriously. Certified, yes. that's an important thing, I think. That's yes, important. it is. Yeah. Everybody else takes it pretty seriously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if I called you and I needed my house, how long would it take you to get there? Just depends on what you got going on. I'm booked out about a month at any given are you? point. I was wondering about that. But when I build routes, sometimes, you know, we run short on other things. We try to work people in I see. as needed. Um, usually with a week's notice, we can find you something. Okay. Um, and then in terms of getting a bid, we usually do those in, inside of 24 hours. Okay, good. So. Yeah, I was going I was wondering about that. The yeah, they all process. come by email, come with insurance, come with uh, photos, all sorts of stuff. Okay. So how many folks you have working for you? Is it basically just you or you? Uh, yeah, it's it's two people yeah. dominantly. Um, and then when we do bigger structures, we have people who come in and help. Good. But we don't employ them regularly. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. that's a smart way to do things. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, gets, uh, it gets expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anything else you want to tell us about your business? Anything? Not at this moment. Okay. I'll have to try to think about it a little bit. Okay. Well, All right. well talk to Ethan while you do that. There you go. All right. <laughs> Ethan, you're another new chamber member, and we're proud to have you too. And you notice that we have so many young faces oh, coming you, into Karen. the chamber. Oh, oh, new people. Well, yes, yeah, and okay. I know you too. <laughs> it's okay, Sue. I know, I know. <laughs> No, we do have Ethan Campbell, and you are a financial uh, advisor yes, for uh, Edward Jones. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Okay. Now, we're not going to ask you any inside information. Okay. You know, we're not going to ask you what's hot on the market today or anything. However, if you had the feeling that you thought maybe you'd want to tell us, you could. But how long have you been doing this, Ethan? Well, I, um, I got my degree in finance in 2012 from Middle Tennessee State University. Um, I've been doing uh, corporate finance and sales. Um, I've been doing um, lots, lots of uh, planning um, in those various jobs, and I've just started at Edward Jones in February of this year. Well, good. 
Good. So, so how when someone comes to see you, what what's the smallest amount of money they ha they can have to invest? I, I get that question a lot. Um, you know, and and lots of people as they come to me, they think that they need an astronomical uh -huh. amount of money for me to help them. Um, uh, I can help them with as little as twenty five dollars a month. You know, okay. uh, we we provide various um, advising services from um, preparing for retirement, living in retirement, education savings, tax savings, and and various other ideas. You know, what, what I like to do with my clients is understand what's important to them and help them achieve those financial goals. Rule of thumb, you're never too young to start saving for your retirement. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, the the younger true. you start and, and the younger you begin to accept good advice, the, the better your, your financial future will look. Um, you know, and I urge everyone, you know, whether they work with me or one of the other financial advisors in the area or a local bank, um, to start getting in that advice. It not only impacts themselves in their retirement, but their children and their educational future um, and, and the future of our county here. My family has been in Cannon County for generations. In fact, I think that they have been in Cannon County since before Tennessee was a state. Wow. Um, so we've, we've made this place our home, um, and, and I have a very vested interest in this county and its future and its prosperity, and I would want nothing more than to help its residents achieve their financial goals and, and make the best future possible um, for them and their children and their grandchildren. That's you, good. you know, this is, a, uh, this is very admirable because really as time goes on, uh, that, that I wasn't kidding about that, to start saving as quickly as you can. And I realize sometimes if you don't have a job and you're in school, that's difficult. And even if you're in college, that's difficult because you're dealing with tuition and student loans probably and everything. But a lot of the people that are moving into Cannon County are retirement age people are coming close to that. You know, so you want to get a hold of them a little sooner than that, don't you? Well, and, and like I said, you know, I, I want to work with everyone to see what their financial goals are and help them achieve that. You know, I don't have a income restriction or age restriction on who I'm willing to work with. You know, I, I just want to help people um, save money and achieve their goals. You know, one of the first um, questions I ask people when they, they meet with me is paint a picture of your ideal retirement. You know, let me know what you want and I'll let you know how I can help you get there. Um, and that's that's one of the, the most essential parts of my job as an advisor is to, to give them the advice to help them achieve what they deem the perfect retirement. So Ethan, let me ask a question. If you are, say you have a, a job where you can contribute to a 401k or a 403b, whatever, whatever that is, um, and then they come to see you for additional investment. Um, of course, it's nice when you have matching from your uh, employer for that. Can you help them decide where to invest that that 401k and 403b plus if they invest with you on different uh, ways to do that? You know, uh, retirement. Um, you know, we, we generally leave that up to their their employer. Um, you know, if they want to do anything outside of that, I would be happy to help them with that. Well, well what I'm saying is, in their 401k or 403b, there's investment opportunities would you guide them because sometimes that's tricky when you or not not so much you'd only deal with your investments um, I, I'm not really at the liberty to okay yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's that's, fine. that's um, you know a, a really you know that's a really tricky question sure. in my world. Um, okay. So you know if if it, that's an individual okay. case basis. Yes, of course it's individual. Yeah, yeah. So okay. But if you just want to make some investments, we can come to you, can't yes, we? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, twenty-five dollars now. Come on, you can't even go to a movie for twenty-five dollars. Or buy a pair of shoes. Or buy a pair of shoes. That's not too much to um, to start with. You know, really, I think that I would have thought that you would have needed more. Yes, and, and you, can start make, you can make a huge, huge difference. Um, if my math is correct, you know, at, for 18 years of a child's life, if you contributed $50 a month without any interest, that would be $10,500. So, you know, um, you know, doing something like that would, would make mm -hmm. a, a huge, huge difference. Wow. It would. 
What else do you want to tell us about your business, Ethan? Um, you know, I, I think we've, we've covered it all. Um, you know, I, I would love, you know, to help Cannon County um, save money, um, and I would love to speak with all of you and see if there's any way that I could be of assistance or value to you. And how would, you, how would they contact you? Um, you can contact me at 615-962-3787 or at Ethan, E-T-H-A-N, dot Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L, -L, at edwardjones.com. And that is your employer, and they are, their office is in uh, Rutherford County, right? Y yes, ma'am. My, my office is at the corner of Southeast Broad and Rutherford Boulevard in Murfreesboro. I am in the public shopping center. And if you didn't get all of that, then call the chamber and I'll give it to you. So. so so when people come in, say they don't know how they want to invest, Ethan, and they just want to make an appointment to come and get advice on where they should start, is there a fee for them to come in and visit with you? There, There is no fee, no consultation fee. You know, as, as a service to our community, Edward Jones has the, the approach that, you know, we, we are not going to charge anybody anything until they begin investing with us. You know, if, if you have any questions about anything that you want to run by me, feel free, you know, to come by or give me a call, and um, I will look at that. And, and and give you advice completely free. That's good. Now, what more can you ask? Y That's right. What more could you ask? Because I charge for advice. I'll just tell you. Oh, right you now. did <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. No, Ethan. I th I wish you a lot of luck. Well, thank you. I think you're going to do well because you're very business-like. Oh, thank you. I so, appreciate that. So, Ethan, so I have to ask you a question. I didn't ask Nick this, and I should have done that, too. Uh, probably Nick's some, very business-like. I know. Uh, he is very business-like, but I know that people always want to know if your people are married. People ask me that all the time. <laughs> They'll say, well, so-and-so was on the show. Are they married? And I'll say, well, I don't know. I didn't ask that question because we had two handsome young men and now three coming up. Well, I'll have people to. People want to know that. If we're matchmaking, maybe we can make extra money here. We can I do may, entrepreneurial. I may and... have to ask them what their interest is if they call for the numbers because <laughs> I don't know that Ethan would want me to hand that out. Are you married? I am married. Um, I, I have been married for three years in July. Congratulations. Um, to a lovely girl named Katie from Las Casas, Tennessee. Um, we are expecting our first baby in oh, July. Oh, wow, that's exciting. Um, we found out to be expecting. We found out last week that it's going to be a boy, and oh. we are ecstatic. We have a puppy who is a blue healer named Dolly um, that we love dearly who just turned one. Um, so, yes, I have a very happy family, and very I'm nice. very privileged to have them. That's very well, nice. nice. Ethan, I'll just tell you, the way you answer that question, you'll learn this, is you're over married. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's you're, we're over married. That's what you need to say. Over married. Over mar I'm over married. I don't understand what that means. Yeah, there's, there's married somebody that was over you over your than, yeah, over right, your over station. Your I say I say so. you over married. Are we okay, over okay. Married, yes. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure what we were going to talk either. about. <laughs> I was just kind of wondering myself. I was going, okay, Mark. Now, what exactly are we talking about? Congratulations. Yes, Thank that's you. exciting. It that's is. Exciting. And I have a blue healer also. And you will love her. She is a good dog. She is. Ethan, if there's anything that the chamber can do to help you on your way, give us a call. Absolutely. I'll be glad to give out any information, whether it be scripted or not. If you want to leave me a script, I'll go stick by that script, I promise you. But I do wish you luck. And I'm, I'm happy for you and your family, too. Well, thank you. So, I appreciate it. Yeah, congratulations. All right. Thank you. That's very good. Nick, you didn't answer the question. <laughs> Can you hear me from way back here? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm here. More or less. The simplest way to say it is. Okay. <laughs> I met her. She's very nice, Well, too. that's good. And she makes, uh, she has her own business, really, in her own right. She'll be in the chamber next year, so. Okay. She makes uh, healthy dog treats. Wow. Well, I have, a, I have a card on her. Well, you may want to stop and get there that we go. card. <laughs> You're building a boarding facility. Oh, you are. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah uh, out in the Pleasant View. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's where they live, and that's where you take dogs that are injured, well, <laughs> left. I don't, I don't want to take on a bunch of charity cases for her, but uh, right. yeah, yeah, we, we do care for dogs. Okay. How about cats? We keep finding cats. We have two cats now. Don't tend to marry well no, dogs. they don't. They don't. They don't. Cats are very independent, and if they don't want to live there, they will go somewhere else. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They, hope that the, uh, my spot they do. Works, so. They do. Yeah. 
We had 13 at one time. Oh we didn't have gosh. a mouse on the whole road. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, <laughs> well, I don't anymore. They just kept coming, having babies and yeah. showing up, and I had to feed them. And thank, thank you, Ethan. Ethan. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mark. You are. You are, you are one of my, you are one of my heroes. Yeah, you're over married. We know that. Uh, he was a teacher to my grandson and probably a few others in my family. Um, he's a teacher at the high school and he does economics, personal finance and entrepreneurship. But he also is a coach for cross country, which is a fairly new sport for our county and has done great in how many years have you had that, Mark? This is our sixth year. Wow. Has it been that long? Yeah, I didn't been even been really think. But you've been to state uh, how many well, actually, times out of that? Know, as individuals or the team every year. We had, uh, Hannah Faulkner was our first one at the state. She uh, qualified. You can qualify at the region if you finish in the top 10 or if your team finishes in the top three. So you can qualify individually or you can qualify as a team. And each year we've had either an individual or the team. The last two years the girls team has gone. The year before that the boys team went. And then we had some individuals uh, before that. That's pretty awesome. So they've done a great, great job. A lot of that's just due to their commitment and support from parents. And they've just done a great job. We have a lot of new sports at Cannon County. When my when my kids first started here, it was basketball and football, right. and and they had little league. Mm -hmm. They did have that, but not with the high school. That was completely different. Now we have cross country, which I think is great because a lot of kids excel at different sports. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of kids. I mean, basketball. There's only so many that are going to get picked. You have a whole group, and some of them do all of the sports. Right. They some of them do both, you know, which the running, if you're going to play ball, <laughs> the running's going to help you. You can tell. You can tell the basketball players that run cross country, Aaron McReynolds last year, Marshall McReynolds, right. uh, they would just never tire, and it helps them. But the sport also draws some kids that are in those sports. And, right. And uh, I think it gives them an option to do some things. And once you get into the running, it becomes more of a lifestyle than a sport, uh, and that's what's great about it. Uh, Wesley um, has still runs, and, and you can do it the rest of your life, uh, you know, considering that mm -hmm. you're, everything holds up, uh, but it's something you can carry on. And, and I think it helps you do a lot of things in your life, because you, especially in endurance running, which cross country is, anything over three miles or so is endurance, and that starts to help you with other things. You fight through problems at home, at school, and it kind of helps you get through some tough times. And if you can do it, you generally find kids do well in school, they do well after life, they go to college, and they do well because they've learned to kind of fight through some adversity. And they do that through this sport. And to complete something. That's right. You know, sometimes you start things and you just don't complete them. Right. And uh, just on that point, we started out with about 60 kids this year uh, that signed up. But after about uh, a month, a lot of them found out that there was some work involved. So now we're down to about 30. <laughs> so, I see them running every I morning. I when yeah. I come in to work, I see them every single morning. We do. In the summer times, we'll run at uh, around 7 just because of the heat. And uh, then once school starts, we'll have to back it up to the evening. It's 7 in the evening, but it's generally that you've got to watch the heat this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. But see, I think that's great to give them other options. And there, and like I say, not everybody, there's, on, there's only so many kids allowed on every team for every sport. Well, now we have soccer, we, which we're a little late getting into that. Right. But uh, we have volleyball. And see, even when I grew up in junior high school, we had all these things. So when I moved down here, I thought, okay, we have two sport, three sports, mm -hmm. really. But... Um, the other thing that, that he does that I, and I will tell you this, if you go on uh, Cannon County Facebook, uh, the Chamber Facebook, there are videos of, uh, because he has an outdoor club and they go kayaking, uh, they were swimming, they were camping, For and my granddaughter only? went on them. It's the high school, out, it's just called the Cannon County High School Outdoor Club. and. And actually, I started it from what I've seen through high school and college. I saw Baylor, Macaulay, Swanee, 
uh, web all had these outdoor clubs and I'm going you know these kids here deserve just as much as those kids deserve yeah. so um, and we have wonderful parks and rivers and streams mm -hmm. here in Tennessee that some of these kids have no idea or just an hour from here so uh, we do a lot of hikes uh, some kayak paddles we did a backpack trip for seniors only uh, last year up in the snow laurel pocket wilderness area so um, just some really great trips that we've done with the kids um, once they do one, they're pretty they're much hooked. hooked. Yeah. Hooked. Yeah. My granddaughter went, well, Wesley went on everyone he could, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. But uh, Whitney went one time, and I would have never pictured her, uh, you know, in a tent and outside in the she wilderness. Had a blast. She did, and she told me there was big spiders everywhere, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's what I so want to be. So how Right next to a, uh, a, a, actually, there was a, she's got a picture of a black widow. Uh, <laughs> yes, she and does. And on the other side of her tent was a beehive. Oh. So this was, on, and it, this was on an island called Graveyard Island out on Del Hala that she went and actually camped. Uh, we, we canoed out to the island and with a group of about 12 kids and camped there, and just had a wonderful time. I mean, they had a really good time. <laughs> How many years you been doing that? I started it about five years ago. Um, to um, you know, I just wanted to expose these kids to things. I was very fortunate. I had great parents. Uh, they got me out, got me to a lot of national parks, and and my dad would get me out of bed at four in the morning when I was young, which I didn't like, but take me fishing, and I did like that. Um, and then through school, I had a lot of mentors that did a great job for some reason, because I didn't make a lot of wise choices when I was in high school. Well, who does? That. Who does? Uh, but uh, so I, I, in a, about eight years ago, I got in a position where I could kind of change gears, and I thought, what can I do to maybe repay some of these guys that spent time and, and, and girls and women and teachers and, and parents that have uh, helped turn uh, get my right, life in the right direction. So I thought this outdoor club and teaching, it would be a great opportunity to do that. So. Hmm. And I've enjoyed it. I love going out with the kids. It's, I'm, I'm like a kid. I'm having just as much fun as they have uh, on these hikes. And they learn a lot. They learn to take care of each other. They learn what to do, what not to do. It can be very dangerous, and they learn how to make it less dangerous. And they've even seen situations where hikers have been lost, other hikers. Uh, this year in uh, the Virgin Falls Pocket Wilderness area, there was a hiker lost. So they understand the consequences and what can happen and what to do to stay out of those. This guy was by himself. And so uh, they just learn how to uh, make these things safer. You can watch the video and you'll know without a doubt that they're having a good time with this because um, they're having fun. I mean, it's not just put on for the video, they're actually having a really good time. And I had two grandkids that really got involved in them and both of it, uh, Wesley more so than, than Whitney did, but they both truly enjoyed it. And, they I, still really did. and I still run with uh, Wesley uh, and I still run with some other cross country runners. I ran with Hannah Faulkner over the weekend. Well, last week we were up at Swanee for the mini camp. We go up to Swanee and stay up there. We take the whole team up and run the trails and uh, work out on the track in the morning. And we actually have, I think, three students from um, Cannon County that are up at Swanee now. And Hannah was up there working in the summer, so we got to run together. Um, so it's it's great. I mean, for as far as I'm concerned, I'll continue with these kids the rest of my life as long as I... As but as they do continue to run. Yeah, they do. Like you say, yeah. Wesley still does. Yes. We try and to do a New Year's run every year. Wes and I get together and try to do about 10 miles every year. Uh, we've made that a tradition now. You know, his car broke down one time and he called me finally and uh, he broke down almost in Murfreesboro and uh, he wanted me to come get him and I said uh, well where are you at and he told me where he was at and I says well how'd you get there and he says I ran and I says you ran all that way to yeah, <laughs> I thought nice. well hun run home but he says I think he was wore out by that time, so I told him, yeah, I'll come get you. <laughs> so, so Mark, what, in, in, at the high school, you teach economics, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that, because so many kids don't even know how to balance their checkbook. Mm -hmm. They don't. It's a great, well, Tennessee mandated these courses about three years ago, oh, okay. I want to say, so which okay. is absolutely uh, is. wonderful. Ethan will agree to that. Um, so, you know, two things the kids have that's greatly in their favor. Number one, they don't have debt, and number two, they've got a lot of time. And they're absolutely amazed that just $40 a week, uh, if they start when they're 20, by the time they get to, uh, you know, in the mid-60s, they can have a million in an index mutual fund. 
uh, but they got to start early and they got to stay out of debt. So that's yeah. kind of the, we use the Dave Ramsey curriculum. Do you? And it's a great curriculum. The kids are engaged in it. They have fun with it. It's it's real. It's relative. Um, so and that's a class. And I tell them that there will probably be no other class that they could get something out of that they're going to start using very quickly. If they can stay out of debt going to college. That's the biggest. And, and that credit card, that's going to be in their mail as yeah. soon as they turn 18. Yep. And they've got to understand what not to do with that. Yeah. Uh, so that's a great course. The entrepreneurship is a small business uh, course where you actually are teaching them, and they have to write a business plan cumulatively through the year on a business that they want to do. And what we'd really like to see is some kids stay in Cannon County and maybe start, and today with the internet it's easier to do than ever, but mm -hmm. maybe start some small businesses in Cannon County instead of uh, the flight into the larger cities and uh, maybe help the, uh, the county. Uh, economically just by opening up more businesses so that's really the push to that one is to show them how to start a business how to write a business plan how not to make the mistakes a lot of people do when they start business plans and then the economics is more of uh, the macro micro uh, looking at the economy as a whole uh, but it's very relative especially in the uh, political situation we're in right now it's very very interesting that's you can make that very relative and have discussions great discussions every day about that so i love those three courses they're great courses to, to teach it's fun for me so in the entrepreneurship how do you do you do the kids have to come up with an idea they and do. Do uh, you teach them through uh, as you go through the, the course you'll kind of teach them but as you teach them they're writing a business plan so they're coming up with an executive summary about the kind of a brief description of the business plan and then they're starting to put it into place what's their marketing plan how are they going to market it what's the marketing cost uh, and then they get into pricing, so they learn about raw materials, and they learn about uh, coming up with what the cost is going to be. Once they come up with a cost, is it a cost that they can compete? Is it less? Is it more? Both could be a problem if, yeah, uh, yeah. from your competitors. So they learn a lot. Uh, doing that, they go to, uh, uh, we use Wix and they go and they'll build their own uh, website. Cause you can build your own website there and then you just cancel it when you're done. Yeah. So you take some pictures and build a website about your business and that's really, they, they love doing that. That takes a little while, but. I bet. Did, has any, have any of the kids really started a business? with a uh, We had one that's um, actually doing some um, more yard work, things like that. Mm -hmm. None that have opened up a business that I'm aware of in Canon. We've had one that's in a hair salon. Uh, she opened that up, I think, um, last year, and I, I feel remiss that I don't know the name of the hair salon, but that is in Cannon County, and she was in the entrepreneurship class. Uh, so we've had a couple to open up businesses in Canon. Well, my, my grandson's 16, and he, they live in California, and he does DJ work. Yep. And so he wanted a new computer, and I made him write a business plan for me before, it, yep. before I gave him. He said, would you buy me a new computer? I said, well, you write me a business plan. Tell me what you're going to do with it, yeah. and I'll, I'll do that. But I would, I would love to have uh, yeah, some information on that. Well, sometimes it actually scares them. Once they get does. through and they see how much is involved in the planning, and I, I don't want to do that. I want them to know the... Uh, the details of it and that the details are very important but I don't want to scare them away from doing yeah. it but a lot of them will come away just going wow and I didn't know that that was involved yeah, in running just one business. step at a time though if they just you know you know it's kind of like anything you just take one bite at a time when right. you want to eat the elephant right right you know so I think that's really good and then when they have friends who are in the same class with them that they could bounce things off of yeah you know I think that that's really helpful that's that's a really I didn't know Tennessee did had had done that Mike did well your economics degree your economics uh, can be satisfied with the entrepreneurship or the economics I class see. either one okay. so you don't have to take the uh, the entrepreneurship it's an option for you yeah. the ultimate, uh, entrepreneurship is more microeconomics about specific small businesses mm -hmm. macro is more about business in general and and how the government spends our money taxes things like that well you see on YouTube there's a lady that she opens toys so that's all that's all she does she opens toys and she's like uh, making billions of yeah. dollars not just millions but a lot billions. of your entrepreneurs anymore are home businesses yeah right? They don't have office fronts. But the biggest problem with most of your businesses or people that are going into business is they don't think ahead. They have X amount of dollars. They rent a storefront. Uh, they put some things in there. They don't take into account that we don't have the foot traffic 
maybe right now right. that you're going to be like Gatlinburg, right. you know, where you have all these people in it. So you've got to kind of look ahead to the hard times because they are going to be there. That's a great example. And we normally start out just, just with that example. We say, well, let's open up a, a dog grooming business in County County real quick. So let's start out with what are we going to start? All right, well, how many people are in County County? All right, we got that. How many people have dogs in County County? Okay, well, what percentage of those people would bring their dog to a dog grooming business? And all of a sudden they start getting that, that yeah. lower and yeah. lower and they go, I don't think we should do that. Which is great. I mean, it's great to do it on yeah. paper yep. before you go out yep. and start that business and then find out and you put all your uh, savings into it. Uh, right. So you've done it on paper on purpose before you've gone in and invested your money. And a lot of these aren't kids. A lot of people that go into business oh, no, no. are not right, kids. Right. They're, yeah. they're older people and they just have a good idea. They just haven't thought, okay, if we don't have all this traffic and we don't make a profit, you know, are you, you go into business uh, with the idea that some way, somewhere down the line, you're going to make a living from this, right. you know, but it's going to be down the line. Yes. And right. Carolyn, I, can, I can't tell you how many doctor's practices I've started in different hospitals I've been at where you have a physician that comes in, brilliant, excellent physician, doesn't have a clue no, how to run a I business. I know that. So you give them their sign-on bonus or their initial, and they spend every penny of it. And then their their time their their income guarantee is up, and they have no money, and they don't know how to run a business. They right. they hire all their family who come in and just oh he's a doctor or she's a doctor, and then you have some who are tight as they can be, and they know how to run a bit. They don't know how to run a business, but they know they don't want to spend all their money. Yeah. These are people with. 12, 20 years education right, right. who still don't know how to not run a business. Common, not uncommon at all. No, and it's they would not. start talking about the insurance yes. and the employee, uh, the things yes. you have to do with employees and the problems you can have with employees. Which that, is always, that's what starts scaring them a little bit yeah. when, you start, <laughs> when you start talking about that. But they need to understand it. And the ones that I think do and do get it but still have that passion. And my, my biggest thing I want to get across in entrepreneurship is if you really have a passion for yeah. what you do, you'll find a way to make it work. But if you don't have a passion, if you go into this thing half cocked, it's going to fail. So you've really got to love what you're getting ready to start doing. You can't go into it thinking, okay, I'm going to be rich. Right. No, the no. And you can't go into it thinking, it's my business. I'll be able to come and go as I please because you're going to put more time into it. Nick, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, time off is still time work. I was going to say, I wish uh, when I was 16 I had exposure to classes like that. Me yeah. too. Too busy buying cars and skates. Well, you're like every, uh, I mean, that's, I think it's great that we have a class where we do something as simple as teach them how to do their checkbook. Or yeah. a budget. Yeah. Or a budget. Right. A budget. A budget. And we show them how to do it, how simple it is, but first you've got to know where your money's going. So for, right. for a month, I'll give them a manila folder and I'll say, anything you spend, you bring that receipt and just shove it in there for a month. It's not hard to do. And then after a month, you dump it on the table, start spreading it out, and here's your budget starting to form in front of you. These little piles of paper show you at least where it went. So now we can start deciding where it's going to go next month. And it may be changing a little bit, but at least you know where these piles are. And that's the start of your budget. And then it starts to get a little more complicated from there, but it's never really complicated. And and you're, you're working with children or students that their parents are usually, most of them are still footing the bills. Yeah. You know. Right. That's right. But there comes a day when you step over that line <laughs> and it's up to you. And they have a hard time adjusting from the parents footing all the bills and to a point, and especially if they get a job, most of them go off to college and then that's the same thing. When you go off to college, you're, you may not be in the household, but you know, you get right. a phone call and you say, well, I need you to put some more money in my account, you know, for whatever right, reason. Right. So Yeah, and so many times you don't even know where your money goes. I mean, you, you stop at McDonald's, you do this, you go to Starbucks, and you can't yeah. believe how much money you spend. And that's spend. not a kid problem. That's not a kid problem. <laughs> that's that's no, not it isn't. That too, isn't. Which is what the manila envelope will do yeah. for you. It'll at least, if everybody brings in all their receipts, it's going to let you know where your money's going. But I got a girl that was telling me, because I try to keep them, do not get a car payment, pay cash for your first car. There's $500 cars that'll, that'll work. Yeah. And then you keep saving your money. Well, she goes, well, I had to get my car payment because I didn't have any money. So wait a minute. What do, how do you pay that car payment? 
She, I said, what's your car payment every month? She said, well, $264. I said, well, in 10 months, that's going to be $2,600. You can buy a nice car for $2,600 and ride with somebody, do something, and pay cash for that car. Yeah. And uh, they just uh, they start to understand a little bit. And we do this as parents. They have to be cool. That's right. Yeah. That, that's a cool thing. <laughs> I, I, you know, I remember growing up when I was young, I would have driven anything. I did drive anything, right. you know. Yeah. But not anymore that i mean you go out to the high school and you look in the parking lot and you will see uh cars that are better than i own now yeah <laughs> yep. i've got kids who can't break a pencil in the classroom but they'll have a 600 hundred dollar phone you know? yeah. and that's <laughs> another oh i don't even want to go right. there right. and cable television <laughs> yeah. regardless that's right. Right. Well, coming in or not that was really that was really interesting about all the things that you're doing um See, I do. I think that's great. And then to put on top of all that, you have the cross country, which I think is great for the students, and then the outdoors club. I just, I think if more kids got involved in that, they would see how much fun that is. Yeah, and it's open to all of them. We make an announcement, and sometimes they just don't hear the announcement, or it's hard to get their attention. But any anybody at the high school, when we make the announcement, can come in. I, I have to limit it. In other words, sometimes I'm sure 12 you do. people or 10 people, according to where we're going. But they can sign up. It's not a club that they belong to. They just come and sign up for the uh, Whichever hikes, one you're going to. Yeah. Yeah. And they can do it. And I want to, want to mention uh, uh, Brian Arrod and the middle school runners, too, because I was out at the park last night. We were having our practice. And I was just looking at the number of kids out there running at Dillon Park. If you go out there on a, on a 7 mm -hmm. o'clock at night, and it was a really wonderful sight to see that many kids. And I'm talking about uh, second graders up out there on that track running. And he does a great job those middle schoolers and that's really uh, feeds into our programs so. now he's another one that has run for as long as yeah, i can remember he he's i mean he's time. an adult he's now. a good runner he's, yes he is <laughs> I'm a, yes I'm, he is my motto is start off slow then taper off <laughs> yeah. that's what I do, but, but i enjoy running okay, okay. thanks well, for mark you this right. has been Thank so you. interesting and i'm yeah. so glad that you came on there and i do want to tell everybody again if they go on our facebook uh, we do have your videos on there they're fun to watch i had fun and i was watching them diving and kayaking and running and the spiders now that's another that's a <laughs> whole other story oh i <laughs> she showed me pictures and i thought and you slept right next to this. I'm not believing this. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Right. Thank you. And thank you for coming on. And good luck this year. Thank yeah, you. good luck is right. We do have another uh, guest that comes in. Of course, he's not new. Uh, he's one of my favorite people. Yes, oh. he is. Neil is the director of the Art Center, and he is also on our chamber board. And, of course, they have uh, many events at the Art Center, but one of them that's coming up is the White Oak Weekend, right? And I brought a big postcard. Well, yeah, that's we all right. that. It seems subtle. <laughs> I thought, uh, what and it's, are we and it's hard to see. Here? It's not bright at all. Oh, because it's Cannon County colors. Yeah. You know, it should stand out against yeah. you know, the forest. Um, so September 10th and 11th, it is the 27th White wow. Oak Crafter. So, I can't uh, believe uh, there's really, that many. Yeah, right. It's, it's, and it's, it's a great, a it's a great craft show. It really is. It is a great craft show. And there's all kinds of things. There's all kinds of things that you don't see in other places. Uh, it's a juried show. We look at a lot of applications. Yeah. Uh, there are some regulars who have been, been with us since the beginning, and there's always some new people. But it's really high quality, handmade, made you know pretty it's much within a couple of counties at most. Artisans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. craft artists. And it's on the river and it's just so pretty. It's a great outdoor day yeah. at the art center. There's some funny things that will happen inside the building. You know, we'll have uh, Greg Rogers will bring a car to advertise the car show. So if you happen to love a particular fancy car, oh. there might be one here. I think we have a few other surprises that will be inside the building as well. Um, so yeah, craft fair, we're getting ready. We just finished the reverse raffle. So if you all don't know the winner's names, it is Glenda Hunter and Barry Bush won or split the $5,000 prize at the reverse raffle fundraiser for the Arts Center the other night. So that was great. See, I would split it too. I never get down. So to my husband's like, I wouldn't split it. I said, I'd split it. It's well, yeah, because I'm, 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 I'm not real lucky. <laughs> so yeah, if it gets down to two, I'm going to say yes. You, you know, I'm, I'm really lucky. 
I, I always win at, at everything. And so every time I go to that, I think I'm going to win today because I <laughs> always win. I always win. I, I, you know, we, when I went to the hospital association, I won $1,000. I won a Yeti thing. I win all the time, and I always think I'm going to win. See, I don't. That should get, keep you coming back. I, absolutely. Yes, so we're, we're. And it's fun. And the food was really good. You did a good job cooking. Thank you. I Very nice job. Like did you have vegetables, huh? There were vegetables, but there was also lots of meat. There was oh, lots of meat. It was very good. Yeah, Anthony Pro did a great job uh, smoking yes. sausage, uh, chickens, and pork shoulder for us. It was really, that really was very spectacular. Good. Yeah. He's a good cook. And there are a lot he of people. Is. It was. A lot of people. It was a crowd. It was a crowd. Very well-controlled, well-maintained crowd. Um, so, yeah, coming up before White Oak, we have Rock of Ages. So it's a, sort of a very interesting modern musical of uh, 70s and 80s, mostly 80s music. So it is not Bible-related Rock of Ages. It is definitely our PG-13 show for the year. So, you know, there will be some language. Uh, we've tried to edit out as much of that as we can. But, uh, you know, those songs just contain some words that may be, you know, whatever. These are 80s bands, huh? Yeah. And lots of great mullet wigs and crazy hair and great outfits and great voices and the talent's really spectacular. So that will be opening up. As it always from, is. Thank you for saying that. It always it is. is. Every time we leave here, I think, oh my gosh, like Patsy Klein, what was she, 15 years? She's 50, she just turned 16. She had her birthday last week. Oh, yep. Uh, that was unbelievable. So yeah. it's crazy. Savannah Gannon, she did a great job. Yeah, she did. Yeah. So, yeah, Brittany Goodwin uh, is directing this next show up, and uh, yeah, it's just going to be. Well, Brittany's a great fine, um, fine talent in herself. Right she is. Yep. She is very good. We're very lucky to have her. Yeah, and yes. so at, with the White Oak, there's other things going on in Cannon County, yes, too. Yes, it's now, this is the second year of White Oak weekend, so uh, the barbecue competition will be happening at the distillery on Saturday the 10th, and then the shops around the square will also be having specials all weekend, so, you know, Come to one, two, or three spots of the day. Come back on Sunday to one of the other two. You know, there's the whole town will be sort of involved we have and a busy. Flea market across the road, and they get into it big time, and a lot of people. Right, uh, parking is three dollars at the art center, but you wind up getting uh, free tickets to the movie to the drive-in, so you wind up really ahead by Which is coming. Always fun. You know, and that three dollars is a contribution that helps make the thing uh, work yeah. for us all. But. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's lots going on. Yeah. They have a good concession stand at the um, drive-in, too, just FYI. I, I, I like oh, they now. have an excellent concession yeah, stand. they really do. They really do. Yeah. They do. And, you know, this summer has gone so fast, I'm not know, sure when Connie and them's closing date is on that. But, I mean, school's starting, you know, Friday. Is it Labor and Day or so further into the year? I think it's a little further in because yeah. she also gives us tickets for the cruise ins. And I always have people tell me when we get into, uh, I don't give them out at the car show, but I do at the cruise ends, and they'll say, well, will this be good next year? And I thought, yes. Yes, it will be. It will be. So, yeah, they're real good. They're good community partners. Yep. They really are. We have a lot of businesses that are good community partners, so that always works out well. And then, you know, um, now, <clears throat> The Odd Couple is coming up in September, the end of September, right? Mary Wilson is directing The Odd Couple, and yes, we're putting that together as we get Rock of Ages about to go on stage. So yes, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is after that, and Elf Jr. is in December. So, And we also have Elvis and in Elvis between Elvis in October there. and The Beatles in December. Okay, so, so we got them all. We try. <laughs> Try to give. We do. Find something for everybody. And you have a new exhibit I noticed out there. What is that uh, today? Some of these items. A different person. Uh, Scrat oh. uh, is oh. a Cannon County resident, and this is his first gallery show. So at all, the Arts everything out there, Scrat did? It's one show, one person, yes. So Scrat, is, Scrat. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I turned around in my backyard one day, and there was like 20 young people, kids yeah. in my in my backyard on this big rock that we're by the river and they had gone, they were going to go to the Reedyville Mill, but it was about four o'clock and I was like, there's no way you're going to get there because the river's, no. So I met Scrat in, at my house. He with said all, he met you. Yeah, with all his friends. Was, he was very interesting. I didn't know he was such an artisan. Was, uh, Scrat and I both worked for the same sculptor in New York City, but 20 okay. years apart. Okay, okay. So now, we had a weird connection, but she's the one who pointed it out because we were just friends and there was no reason to bring up that weird work experience working for this world famous uh, clay artist who also does bronze and paper and jewelry and uh, architectural pieces wow. as well. So. Um, yeah, we've had a very interesting year talking through that relationship and then uh, watching this show happen for him. And then you went to Miami to meet with 
we both went to Miami to go to that show opening, which was at the, the Perez Museum, and then she was also involved with the ballet that opened the same week. Wow. So, uh, you know, we were treated very well by Michelle Donor in her studio that weekend. Very nice, very nice. Well, the, the pieces are very interesting out yes, there. Yes, they are. They're very cool. Every, I, everything you've never imagined a face jug might be or yeah, a face bottle. Yeah, it's very model. cool. It's a, it's, it very, it's a scratch take on things. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. So lots going on at yeah, the that, Art Center. That will open, we have uh, lots of uh, artists. opening party on the 18th, yeah. so come have a glass of wine, meet the artists and meet uh, some neighbors that you, know, you probably haven't met before. Okay, very good. And a lot of those artists are your neighbors. Yep. You just right. don't know it yet, but they are. <laughs> yeah. And let's see, that just about takes us through the year. Huh? It takes the Art Center through the year. that's everything. But we're already figuring out next year, so uh, maybe the yes, next show they are. They you... already have a 2017 yep. calendar Season's up already there. Laid out. So, um, and I do have some events that I do have a card of things that are coming in 2017. And then we have the dog days of summer uh, sales and around the square in Woodbury. That's the uh, 19th through the 21st. Of August. Of August. And of course, they try to keep something going year round now. And um, one of their biggest days is this White Oaks weekend. Uh, I always thought the Christmas open house on the square, and that is one of their, their yeah, most fruitful days, but also this um, this one with since they started the White Oaks weekend, because uh, a lot of people that come to the uh, craft show and when they're going out or when they come in, they'll say, "Well, what else is going on?" You know, so well, we've got uh, the barbecue competition yep. at the Short Mountain Distillery, and then they can go downtown and shop for as long as they want to. And a lot of people, they like going in the antique stores, and we do have quite it's, a few of them There's some pretty now, awesome so. antique stores. You know, I've been, when I go to different places and I go in the stores like Franklin and things like that, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful downtown area, but our stores are awesome and cheaper. And cheaper. <laughs> and cheaper, a lot cheaper. Cheaper, easy parking. Easy yeah. parking, yes. and and friendly with, people. Uh, there'll be four to 6,000 people in, four to six, not 46, uh, oh. over the weekend uh, oh. of September 10th and 11th. But uh, there's plenty of parking in Woodbury. You know, yeah, there nice is. Room to get around. Yeah. And you can just get out and walk. All, most of your antique stores, not all of them, are right around the square or within a block or two yeah. of the square. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's easy to get to all of them. And of course, we have the Birdsong Studio now that is on High Street, right next to the post office. And Robin is, Robin she's so sit. nice and friendly. And, and does and not sit still. No, if there's no, a she's yoga gone going on, the there's time. a concert going That's on, right. or a songwriter session. Yeah. So it's, and it's, it's very it's, busy. It's wonderful. We went the other day for, what was it, maybe April? Is that? What, yes. Yeah, maybe April. Yes. They were awesome. They were wonderful and very talented people. Oh my gosh! And she was lovely. It's in her home, yeah. which is an old church. And then uh, we also went to yoga there, which was very interesting and fun. Uh, so she's got lots of things going on there. She's she's a pretty remarkable lady as yes, well. Yes, she is. Yeah, and the biggest event uh, nationally, you know, recognized will be Emmy Sunshine in October. And yeah. uh, I think there's maybe 15 tickets left for that show. Okay. And uh, the and church you, only fits uh, 75 people. The studio only fits yeah. 75 people. Yeah. And you hear about Emmy Sunshine. Apparently. All over the place. Yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing that's going on. And um, Short Mountain Disc Jam will be taking place at Short Mountain Distillery. That's a three-day event. That is going to be on August 26th through the 28th. And that is a disc golf tournament. And part of the proceeds of this goes to the Limbs for Life Foundation, which um, helps people that need prosthetic limbs. And so I didn't know that, but I think that's great. And, and disc golf is... It's a big thing. It's, it's a big thing, and it's Frisbee, but Frisbee is a trademark name, so it's called disc golf. Even though it's but, really, but Billy was saying there's like teams of people that's that they go all yeah. over the country and do that. But what if you're not? I wonder if you if you just you yeah, can just show you up. just show up and play. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's fun. You're walking around a farm field, you know, throwing yeah. a, you know, yeah. a disc. A frisbee. frisbee. And he has his restaurant open again. The restaurant's yes. open on Thursday, set. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, eleven to four. Eleven to so four. So pop in for lunch. They're very busy on weekends. Yeah, yeah, that's good too. It is good because they have a great. Oh, golly, they have a great view 
Uh, well, that's beautiful. one of the prettiest farms it, it in, really is. in Cannon County. And, um, and they show cocktail, it off very well. Yeah, and they do cocktail classes they do on cocktail Saturday. cocktail classes, yeah. Because that's what I won at the... Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Congratulations. Yes, I did. Thank you. <laughs> You'll be up there in I'd your be, little chef's throwing, hat. <laughs> throw, yeah. <laughs> throwing the bottles up and down, yeah. Yeah, what was that show? Cocktail. Where, yeah, that's cocktail. right. Yeah. <laughs> where they did that. I hardly wait till you do that soon. <laughs> yeah, you have um, to wait a while. <laughs> You break a lot of things, but that's right, okay. That's right. The cruise in always. We've got another one on the fourth Saturday of the month. That's free. Uh, it's from four till seven thirty. And you know the the April was the biggest turnout we've ever had for a cruise in. And um, so, what's the date of this August? What's the date of the cruise in this month? Twenty seventh. The twenty seventh. Okay. And then the Color Fall Car Show will be on September twenty fourth. Now that's trophies, cash prizes, and more. And there is an entry fee for the vehicles for uh, the car show, and that's twenty dollars. So, uh, but everybody has a good time. If the weather's good, it's we've had some great ones, and we last year we had to use the rain date. Three of them, so we ended up with the cru with the cruise in the last cruise in. But there could be as many as a couple show. hundred cars who show up for this. Yeah, right. right? They could. And the people are so excited to be, you know, they love coming here. It's it's just beautiful. And so. the cruise in's as hot as it's been the last two months. I thought, okay, there'll be five maybe. Hey, there was 50, 60 cars. Uh, that's a lot for a cruise in, and especially when it's 100 degrees. And I'm not kidding you, it was 100 degrees out there. <laughs> but they come, they have a good time, so that's that's fine. We'll be there. If they can get there, we'll be there. Um, September 3rd, 4th, and 5th is Cannon County Walking Horse Association, and this will be their Labor Day ride. And uh, the horses come to Woodbury, and they leave the fairgrounds at 11 o'clock, and they ride up to the campgrounds on Short Mountain, and they camp and ride horses and horse shows and dances and music for the whole weekend. So that's always a lot of fun. And then, like I say, September brings in the White Oaks. Craft Fair and Sue, the 16th and 17th, is the uh, Gospel Jamboree, and that will be at the Covered Arena in Woodbury. Music begins at 6 on Friday and 3 on Saturday. A lot of people come to that, too. That's, they do. That's great music. They do. And I think maybe if you're a gospel brand, you can just come in and sing. Yeah, mm. play and sing and pick and grin and do all that. No, they bring in a lot of people. They that do. does. <laughs> And then the the newer thing, and this will be at the art center, out on the uh, out on the grass, and that seventh the seventeenth of September will be Ignite Musical Festival and Barbecue Cookoff, and that's hosted by Ignite Missions and Ministries, and that will be from one until eight p.m. and bring your own chair, and they have great contemporary. Uh, Christian bands. Right. I and mean, this is an example of an event uh, where the Arts Center doesn't produce the show. We just make our facilities available, uh -huh. and, right. and someone else manages the event. And uh, we're very excited that this event's going to happen great. here, and we'll make use of uh, the grounds. Yeah, we great. had. Uh, they were at Dillon Park last year, but it was in, I believe, it was in later October. And it was so cold. <laughs> yeah. I about froze to death. But the bands were amazing. I mean, they were. They had rock bands and and um, the music was good. And they have um, a lot of speakers because we heard it downtown. You could hear it on the square. So, and that's okay. Just bring your own bring your own chairs to that, please. Is there anything else that anybody wants? Sue, you have anything going no, on? No, but I will tell you uh, some exciting news at the hospital. I know that they've received a new 3D uh, mammography machine, which is pretty awesome. Uh, top of the line, state, state of the art, and I think they're doing 2D now and then 3D further on in the year, so hopefully somebody from the hospital can come on and talk about that. But that's pretty nice for uh, Cannon County women to have something right. so awesome. Uh, so that's very exciting. You usually have to go to Nashville to get yeah, these. So. Yeah, or, or Murfreesboro, but it's going to be great. Um, so, so that's good. Um, no, everything else. Uh, what tiny plug for Brittany Goodwin, uh, who also works here, as we've mentioned. Uh, she just pr uh, had her book published. Uh, oh, so wow. it's a 
doing very well. It's a more ebook, but there's print copies as well. It's called If You Were Gone, and it's doing very, very well. And what is it? A, is it's it a, a teen thriller, a teen really? mystery. If yeah. You're well, Gone. Right. If You're Gone. I didn't know Brittany was writing. Uh, yes, she, she produced. She and her husband it. had uh, produced and filmed two movies that they, you know, a few years ago, and mm -hmm. then, uh, since she's been here, she's been, she's been working on this. She wow. is so talented. She is so talented, <laughs> and and so nice. Her husband. Yes, she they're is. both so and lovely. Both of them are. Yeah. Yeah. They are. So very good. Yeah. Okay, That's guys, exciting. we're out of time. We thank you for watching, and of course, we want you to come back next month because we're here every month, and we'll probably have. We'll be getting into October then. I can't believe that. Yeah. We're talking October and November I'm just already. Flies, isn't it? When you're having fun. Pumpkins, then Santa. Yep. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for Thank watching. You.